There are thousands of developer tools that claim to increase your productivity and make you a better programmer. But which one should you use? In this video, I'm going to tell you about six really useful developer tools that I use in my daily workflow to build better projects faster. All of these tools are free or have a very generous free tier that is going to take you a very long time to use. You're not going to be getting any useless seven day trials here. And by the way, this video is not sponsored. Let's get to it. Number one, Postman. Postman is an API development platform that makes it really easy to manage, test, deploy, and document your APIs. Inside of Postman, you can create a new collection which can include your API endpoints. You can configure each request by adding in the request type, the URL, as well as parameters, authorization settings, headers, and a request body. When you send the request, the response will be displayed here. You can then save this as an example of what a successful response looks like, or even copy some of the code snippets to add the API request to your code. Postman also has this really useful thing called the Public API Network, which has hundreds of thousands of different APIs pre-configured inside of Postman. So instead of reading the documentation for an API, you can just get started with it straight away. Number two, GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is a CI/CD platform that enables you to add automations to your GitHub repositories. Let's say, for example, that every time you create a new pull request to merge from one branch to the master branch, you want to run an automation that checks to make sure that all of your code is working. You could use a script like this in GitHub Actions to automatically trigger tests inside of a secure environment. Or let's say that every time code is pushed to the master branch, you want to automatically deploy your code to the production servers. You could use a script like this to automatically run the build process and then push the code to your server. Automating tasks like these can not only save you time, but can also reduce the risk of mistakes. Number three, Draw.io. Draw.io is a completely free diagramming tool that you can use to plan your projects. One of the most overlooked mistakes that programmers make when starting a new project is forgetting to plan before they actually start writing code. By using a tool like Draw.io, you can know exactly how your code is going to work before you spend hours developing it and then realizing that you missed something. You can use the basic shapes in your diagrams, but they also have some pre-installed icons from various cloud computing providers that you can definitely find useful. There's even an extension that you can use inside of Visual Studio Code to open your diagrams directly in the editor. And that's really useful for adding visual documentation to your project. Jest is a delightful testing framework that you can use to write tests for your JavaScript and TypeScript projects. Your tests sit inside of the .ts.js and .ts.ts files inside of your repository. They work exactly like every other JavaScript file. The only difference is that every time you run the jest command, all of your test files get run. Here's an example. Let's say that I want to create a test to make sure that this function here is outputting the correct answer. I'll create my test file and then use the test function to create a new test. Now in jest, we have something called matches, which is what we can use to add test logic. In this case, we're going to expect the output of this function call to be the number five. There's a bunch of different matches that you can use within your test, so make sure that you check out the documentation. Now, if we run the jest command, we should receive a success output for our test. You can use this to test any functionality within your projects, so it's definitely worth a try. If you're a Python developer, I'd recommend using something called PyTest, which essentially has the same functionality. And if you are a Python developer, you are definitely going to love this next tool. Have you ever needed to demo your Python projects to someone, but the command line just looks really underwhelming? Let me introduce you to number five, Streamlit. Streamlit is an open source Python package that you can use to build quick visual user interfaces for your Python projects instead of spending hours building an interface using another language. To get started, you'll need to install Streamlit into your project. For this example, I have a function which adds two numbers together using Python. Now I could demo this function by simply defining the numbers inside of the command line when I run the Python file, but that will make the demo look really boring and could make the demo more difficult to do if this was actually a more complicated project. So what we're going to do is import Streamlit into our Python file, add in some text that explains what the application does, and then add in some number inputs to our interface. We can then pass these numbers into our function and display the result. This now displays our project in a more user-friendly way without us spending hours designing a user interface in something like HTML. Okay, so now what if you're building products for end users and want to find out how you can improve them? Let me introduce you to the final tool of this video, number six, Mixpanel. Mixpanel is a product analytics tool that makes it really easy to keep track of how your users are actually using your product. Now you may be thinking, why don't I just use Google Analytics? Well, the best way that I can explain it is that Google Analytics seems to be much more focused on things like page views and traffic, which are really good for SEO, but Mixpanel seems to be much more focused on tracking the actions that the users take when using the software. 
once you've created an account, it's really easy to start tracking events inside of your front end code and also your back end code. Using any of their libraries, I'm able to track events, like when a user clicks this button. I can also add custom attributes to my tracking information that I may use later. I can now see the tracked events coming through on my feed. I can then create reports like this one to track conversion rates or potentially user flows or anything else. All of these reports are customizable so that you can track the metrics that matter to you the most. So there we have it, six useful developer tools that you can use to build better projects much faster. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like down below, hit the subscribe button if you're new and tap the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. See ya.